Welcome back to the Upper Tier Podcast, folks. This is your show, The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, the show that we bring you each and every week where we break down all the results from the Premier League at the weekend and we try and break them down into The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. Of course, looking behind me there, no guess to see where The Ugly is, but let's start. Let's break down the results first of all. Start off Saturday lunchtime, Leicester nil, Chelsea 3. Very impressive from Chelsea, unbelievable goals from Rudiger, Kante and Pulisic with the goals. Um, Kante's goal was absolutely sublime. Big run in towards the box and absolutely puts it into the top corner. Outstanding, but more to talk about Leicester later on when we get into the show. Aston Villa 2, Brighton 0. Late goals on in the last 10 minutes from Molly Watkins and Tyrone Mings. Um, getting Gerrard off to a good start again. We'll get back to it. Burnley 3, Palace 3. Plenty of goals in this. Ben May, Chris Wood, Cornet, Ben Teke with two, and Gay with the other one. Newcastle three, Brentford three, Lascelles, Joel Linton, Sam Maximum, Tony Henry, and then an OG from Lascelles. And Norwich two, Southampton one. Goals from Pukki and Handley, and Shay Adams got Southampton off to the mark, but uh, Dean Smith getting off to a winning start there as well. Watford four, Man United one. This is one we're going to get into during the show. Goals from Josh King, of course. You couldn't ride it, could you? Uh, Sar, Pedro and Dennis and Van der Beek just after the break with a goal that got United back into it. But unfortunately, it fell apart when Maguire received two yellows with a red card. Wolverhampton won, West Ham nil. One of the shocks of the weekend. I expected West Ham to do the business there. I think Darren on the preview predicted a draw, but Raul Jimenez popping up with the goal. Delighted for the guy. Yeah, and back after that. Terrible head injury, so great seeing him on the score sheet getting the win for Wolves. And then Liverpool 4, Arsenal nil was the evening game. Lots of pressure on Liverpool, we'll talk about that later. But goals by Mane, Jota, Salah and Taki Minamino coming on to get a late goal. His first at Anfield in front of the cup. Excellent from the young lad. Then Sunday, Man City 3, Everton nil. Sterling, Rodri and Bernardo Silva with the goals. In truth, could have been a hell of a lot more. Everton look like they're in real trouble. And again, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. And then rounding out the weekend, Tottenham coming from behind 2-1 against Leeds. Dan James putting Leeds, Daniel James, I should say, putting Leeds ahead. And then Spurs coming back in the goals from Holberg and Regulon. Um, so, yeah, good start there from Conte. Um, let's get into the show then. The good, plenty to talk about this week in the good. Let's start with Chelsea. Absolute levels above Leicester without a shadow of a doubt. It was boys against men. I looked at some of the stats in the first half and Leicester, I don't think they even had a shot in the first half for an attacking team like Leicester. That is absolutely shocking. Their passing was all over the place. They were so disjointed. And Chelsea, the pressure that they applied to them was unbelievable. And in truth, this could have been a whole lot more. They were overpowered all over the pitch. So hats off to Chelsea. Steven Gerrard era began at Aston Villa, left the late with two late goals in the last 10 minutes, as we said earlier, from Tyron Mings and Ollie Watkins. But great to see Gerrard getting off to a uh, great to see Gerrard getting off to a winning start. Um, outstanding from him starting at, uh, at Villa. Also, Dean Smith, who he replaced, started off at Norwich, giving Norwich their manager bounce, if you like, beating Southampton 2 1. Again, another shock at the weekend. Um, but Norwich full value for their win. And they um, played a much more direct kind of approach, yielding a great result for Dean Smith there. So Norwich getting that win under the belt and getting Dean Smith off to a winning start at Norwich. So good news there for both him and Gerrard um, in their new roles. Wofford, what can we say about Wofford? An absolutely brilliant performance against the United. Bossed them and bullied them all over pitch. They were stronger everywhere. Ranieri starting to settle in nicely now into that Wofford role. And it was a win that was badly needed, in fairness, looking at their league position. But United, you know, we'll get into United in the ugly section, but I mean, Wofford were just sublime. And in fairness, it could have been more when you think of the Haya saving two penalties. I mean, you were looking at the Haya again being United's man of the match. And as we say on these shows all the time, it's eventually going to catch up with you where your goalkeeper will be man of the match, but he just won't be able to do enough to keep it. And in fairness, Watford missing two penalties. I mean, it could have been so much more. Uh, Liverpool also win the good this week. Um, very, very strong 4-0 win against Arsenal. This was um, 
the, the golf and talent here was unbelievable. I mean, Liverpool were so dominant in this match. And this was Liverpool coming off two, two poor performances against Brighton and West Ham in the league. And Arsenal, who were in a rich vein of form, I think they um, hadn't lost in 10 or something like that, if I'm right. Um, so this was this was an opportunity, although they had some easy fixtures in that run of 10 matches, this was their opportunity to really test themselves and see has the Arteta situation improved greatly. But Liverpool absolutely bossed them with the press game. It was unbelievable. The golfing quality was unbelievable and the goals were outstanding. And again, it could have been a lot more. Ramsdale was unbelievable on the day, um, you know, and really saved their backside in fairness when you look at it. Let's get into the bad. Um, only one place to begin. We'll start with Leicester. Struggling now with two wins from six. It's going to be a long season for Rodgers, who's been linked to United. Not sure. I don't think we can put down the links to United as having an unsettling effect because they've only been recent, the links to United. And uh, as we know, Oli got fired. But I don't think that's what's destabilising Leicester because they looked like they've been struggling all season and their league position will tell you that. And this was Leicester who had brought in a number of key signings and stuff like that. So they were expected to push on, you know, if not a top six or not, if not a top four, certainly a very comfortable top six. Looks like they're going to struggle to even achieve that now. So be interesting to see what happens there with Rodgers, especially on the back of that position now open at United. Brighton also struggling with no wins in six. Very unusual for Graham Potter and beginning to slide down the table. So he has a lot of work to do there at the moment to steady that ship. But Brighton just look a little bit out of sorts at the moment. They're not that usual strong um, setup that you would associate with Potter. So he needs to steady that ship. Um, poor result for Southampton at Norwich. Hassle Hill with plenty of work to do there. Um, Southampton looked um, way off it. Um, not sure if it was a manager's bounce or what it was, but Pukki looked well at it. The boy Norman looked well at it. Um, and they just looked to be head and shoulders above Southampton at times, which is very unusual. Southampton are normally very strong. Also, a poor Sean from West Ham, um, especially on the back of a great result against Liverpool. Um, you would have thought they would have put up a stronger showing against Wolves. Um, but Wolves getting the critical goal with uh, Raul Jimenez taking all the points there. So again, Moyes back to the drawing board um, after a huge result against Liverpool. I expected West Ham to be nailed on in a game against Wolves. Everton on the slide, no wins in six as well as they struggle in front of goal without Calvert-Lewin. Can't seem to find any goals and seem to be very porous at the back now. Um, giving away goals now on a regular basis. So uh, plenty of work for Rafa to do there as well, to shore that all up. Um, needs to sort that out pretty quick. It's there on quite a slide. Going to get into the ugly here. Um, two teams that are dropped into the ugly this week. Obviously, Man United is one of them. You know, playing with a level of fear was evident. You know, panicking in possession, disjointed passing. You know, a team void of confidence, you know what I mean? And you have to question. I know ollie has gone now, so it's all come full circle, but you have to question, I mean, like going off on holidays for a week, showing that kind of form, you know what I mean? And then like people like Harry Maguire doing things like they did on international break, drawing attention to themselves and just heaping more pressure on themselves and the club. Maguire was absolutely shocking in this match. For a guy who had his hands up to his ears and his fingers in his ears and all during international break, you know, because he thought he was the, the second coming of Sergio Ramos um, just because he scored a goal against Albania or whatever it was, or San Marino, you know what I mean? And then trying to send a message to people like going back, this is me, this kind of thing. What a fool, like, you know what I mean? Just heaping pressure about on his manager, his club and himself. Absolutely idi idiotic, you know what I mean? Ollie's now gone, we know he's forward, so the Ollie era is over. Um, no shock to anyone, I mean, with all due respect, you could argue it could have happened months ago. It certainly should have happened after the Liverpool game, but the board were trying to stick with him. I think it's is it as much as the board is trying to stick at them or it was that they hadn't got a plan B and there was no one really lined up? I mean, obviously, you know, a lot of managers, all the top managers, most of the top managers at the moment are pretty much tied up at this stage that United would want. Um, they kind of missed the boat a bit with Conte. Saddam doesn't want to come in. So there's a lot of problems there at the moment. Huge game coming up against Villarreal. If they were to lose that game and Atalanta were to win their game as well, United could find themselves third in the group. 
um, in the next 48 hours. And that would be really, really concerning because it's whether they'd have the confidence to climb out of that. And then going out of the Champions League and into the Europa League, what does that do in terms of the thinking from Ronaldo or for Cavani or for players like that? Jaden Sancho must be having a nightmare at the moment, thinking he's moved from Dortmund to this, you know, has been a bit part player at times, hasn't played up to the level that we know he can play. Donny van der Beek, I mean, he just has to play now. They've installed Carrick as in charge at the moment. As far as I know, listening today, his badges allow him to stay in charge for about six weeks. I don't expect it to take that long to get a new manager in. But again, it depends on who is available. But this is a serious situation for United now. They could go on a serious slide down the table and also out of that champ, those Champions League places. Their season could come crumbling down in the next two weeks really, really quick if that board doesn't act. And the fear is it should have acted before the international break. It should have acted weeks before that. Some people would argue it should have acted at the Villarreal game in the Europa League final. That was absolutely shocking as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, where do we begin? There's just so many things wrong at United at the moment. Where do we begin? The manager is only one section of it. I mean, the guy who was coaching the team is now in charge of it. You know what I mean? Even in an interim basis. So it's just... I don't know, it just, you know, you'd fear for United at the moment in terms of where they are, they're thinking. The other team I put down in the ugly this week was Arsenal, you know what I mean? And I, I kind of felt bad doing it as well because they've been in brilliant form, you know, they've shot back up the table considering at the first international break they're bottom of the table with no points, albeit they had a couple of tough fixtures to start with. But I just thought they were way off the pace on Saturday evening against Liverpool. They never looked in the game. Obama Yang bar a couple of little breakaways that Van Dijk and Matt have dealt with. Absolutely nothing to offer. The boy Saka was never in the game. Smith Rowe was never in the game. You know, Ben White um, coming out of the fence with the ball like that and then losing it, putting his team in trouble. Tavares with that pass into Jota for that sublime goal where he put the defender on his ass, uh, Gabriel, and also Ramsdale, early dive and stuff like that, and just poked it in with such calmness. The truth is, if it wasn't for Ramsdale, this could have been six or seven. It could have been a right embarrassment, really, for Arsenal. Um, So I had to drop them in there, but a lot of work, a lot of work for Arteta to do. I think he's done a lot of really good work so far, but I've said it this time, this year, season, or this time, time and time again. When you come up against Liverpool, Man City or Chelsea at the moment, they are levels and head and shoulders above the rest of the division, generally speaking, um, bar the odd blip. So I just think, you know, that was a real test there. And Arsenal could have went ahead of Liverpool in the in the league if they had to beat them. And the thoughts of that as well, obviously, inspired Liverpool onto that. Plus the little blow up between Klopp and Arteta really got the crowd going and got the Liverpool players fired up. And that taken into account that Chelsea had opened up the gap to seven points. So if we wanted to stay in a title race, it was imperative that we went out and, and you know, press the game and, and, you know, put our marker on the game and didn't give Arsenal any opportunity, really. And that's what happened. And in truth, Arsenal just couldn't deal with the press anywhere. Even part they struggled at the time in midfield. Thiago pulling the strings. Simicus on the wing was absolutely outstanding. Fabinho, what a, what a performance from Fabinho. Give him a nine or a ten, I think we gave him in the rating. He was just incredible, really, just in terms of how he plays and just makes it all look so simple. And though came on, Ox had a great game, they all did, but Arsenal struggled all around the pitch. As always, head over to YouTube, Dynamo Podcast Network, try and share, subscribe, and like all that stuff. Also, hit the bell notification while you're over there. I'm sure there's a number of topics that we cover on the network there that might interest you from metal music to horror to retro movies all that kind of stuff there's ice hockey over there there's there's a variety of great interviews loads of really good stuff over there so hit that bell notification so you always know when stuff all new content gets uploaded as always you'll get audio versions of the show on spotify and if you'd like to contact the show we're on twitter at the underscore upper underscore tier or you'll get us on facebook or instagram the upper tier Thanks for tuning in, folks. We always appreciate the support. And we will be back with you again next weekend with another episode of The Good and the Bad and the Ugly. Cheers.